Hello everyone, welcome to Art and Design. My name is Thorkir and today, today is a good day because Procreate 5 has now officially been released to the public. This is a really big update. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna dive into what has changed in the Procreate 5 update. Now, if you wanna learn more about Procreate, I have a 10 part video tutorial series about Procreate. So we're gonna link that in the description. So go ahead and check that out. There's a lot of information to cover. It pretty much covers the entire spectrum of the program. Now, of course, there have been some new updates uh, since I made that tutorial series, but that's what this video is all about. So let's start by creating a new type of canvas. So if we tap on this icon right here, we go into the new custom canvas creation screen. And now here basically we can specify the width and the height of the canvas that we're gonna be drawing on and the uh, DPI, uh, the resolution basically of uh, the canvas. And uh, one very, very nice thing that we have to mention is this one right here. Color profile. Now if I click on this, you'll see, wow, there are a lot of new options here. Now within the RGB spectrum, we have the P3 color gamut. This basically gives uh, the colors more punch. They're a little bit more saturated on the extreme edges. Uh, and we now have a bunch of different color profiles. Now I know that a lot of industry professionals rely on color profiles because with the right color profile, you can be sure that uh, the colors that you're seeing on the screen are the same as will be produced on any specific device or if you're gonna print. So within the CMYK spectrum, we now have a lot of different color profiles and this is, this is really nice. So you can now specify uh, any of these specific color profiles. Now, if you don't know what any of these stand for, then I would recommend that you stick with the generic uh, CMYK color profile. So really nice that we now have a lot of different profiles to choose from. Moving on to the time-lapse settings, we now have a few options to choose from. We can now specify how much resolution we want the time-lapse to have uh, once we are actually drawing on the canvas. So if we want the time-lapse replay to be really high resolution, with really, really nice uh, quality, like lossless quality, you can venture into using these settings right here. And I'm not gonna judge, it's just gonna take a lot of space on your iPad. But uh, for most people, I probably suggest using 1080p or 2K. Uh, it's probably gonna be enough for most people. Another fourth one, the canvas properties. We can now specify a background color before we create uh, the actual uh, artwork. So if you specify that uh, when I click on a new canvas using this custom canvas, it's going to start with a black background. So as we can see, the canvas is now black uh, from the beginning. So that's really nice. Now let's talk about the animation assist. So if we tap on the wrench icon right over here, go into canvas, we can now turn on animation assist. That is going to give us this contextual control right over here, allowing us to create new frames and uh, work with some settings. And uh, this all can become clear once we start using it. So let's choose a nice brush. Let's just do a very simple animation here. We have, of course, Ole Prik, who is the most famous person in Iceland. And uh, we want Ole Prik to move. We want him to animate. Now, one way of doing so would be to tap on this button right here, add a new frame. And what happens now is a new frame, completely blank, is gonna be created, and an onion skin frame is gonna be left behind. And what that means is we're gonna see through the frame that we are currently drawing on, and we can now see underneath what we just drew. So we can now specify how much of it we want to show or how many we want to see in the past. So if we just try to redraw Ole Prik very quickly, like so, and uh, he is just sort of dancing, 
you can see this is going to take quite a while if we need to redraw him every single frame, right? So what Procreate has added is the ability to tap and hold on this button right here in order to duplicate the previous frame. So now we can simply double tap on the Apple Pencil and erase this one and do something like this. But the point is, it's really easy now to create simple animations like this. Um, not that this is a good animation, but <laughs> but you get the point. Um, we can now animate in Procreate. And uh, if you tap on any of these frames, we can um, specify a hold duration. So I want this frame to hold for eight frames. And then basically it's going to do this. Now, a feature that most of us are going to use and enjoy are the new brushes that Procreate has to offer. With the new update, there are now a lot of new brushes and they've been integrated within these categories. So uh, if we go into, for example, artistic, uh, we now have a bunch of cool new brushes that utilize the new brush engine that Procreate has designed within this release. I'm pretty sure that most of you are going to find a brush that you enjoy using because there are so many new brushes and the new brush handling engine is just absolutely fantastic. With that in mind, let's take a look at it. If we tap on any of these brushes, we are taken into the new brush studio. Now I have done a video about that very recently, so you can go ahead and check that out in the uh, card over there. There's going to be a link and you can see what changes have been made in the brush studio. Now from what I can see, uh, that video still is relevant. The settings haven't changed much since then, so I highly recommend that you go ahead and check that out. But the basic premise is there are a lot of new ways of creating the brushes. Uh, you can try out the brushes on this really nice canvas right here and uh, you can see the effects that these settings have in real time. Uh, simply by tapping on the settings. So we can see what effect uh, some of these settings have. So that's a really, really nice addition because it now means that we can sort of just play around with the brush and immediately realize the impact that a specific setting might have on the brush. And underlying all of these changes in the brush studio, this isn't just a nice fancy skin on top of what was already there in Procreate 4.3, uh, but there are a lot of new ways of interacting with the brushes. One of which is, for example, the color dynamics. So if I draw a line like this and I increase the hue in the stamp color jitter, we can see that this brush is now dynamic. So as I'm drawing, the colors are changing with each stamp. So this is a stamp, each time uh, a single Point gets rendered, that's called a stamp. You can now vary the colors of the stamps using these settings. And if you don't want to deal with the stamps, if you just want to uh, vary it based on the strokes, then you can use this setting right here. And uh, that's going to mean that each stroke that you make is going to vary. So, and the pressure obviously is going to dictate so how part you press down is going to change the color. That's gonna allow us to create some really, really nice brushes. So go ahead and check it out if you're interested. But just note that underlying all of these uh, nice UI improvements and uh, some of these, uh, some of these uh, ways that the brush seems to interact with the canvas, underlying all of this are some very nice changes to the brush handling engine. So basically how the brush interacts with the stroke that you're currently creating and how the brush interacts with the paint that is already on the canvas. So there have been some very, very nice improvements to how all this works to a degree that you can now import Photoshop brushes directly into Procreate. So that's going to allow us to get an even wider uh, variety of brushes in Procreate because Photoshop has existed for a long, long time. 
So having access to uh, all of those brushes that have been created is just going to be absolutely fantastic. And once you've created a brush that you're very happy with and you want to uh, label it as your own, you can now specify that this was created by, by Thorger. And you can now create a restore point. And if I screw up this brush, if I change the settings to a point where I'm really not using the same brush anymore, I can always go back to this reset point. And uh, I can even include an image from the camera or from the photos. So <laughs> just a nice additional touch to this. Now, last but not least, if we want to merge two brushes together to combine the characteristics of the two, we can now do that by selecting the primary brush first and then swiping on the secondary brush, which will be added to the primary brush. So, for example, if I take the tattoo brush here and I want this one to be the primary brush and I want this one to be the secondary, I can just simply swipe on the secondary and then tap on combine. And it's going to add the secondary brush to the primary brush, which basically means that they are now combined. And now once you're happy with the brush that you've selected, you can start drawing on the canvas with it. And of course we want more than one color, so we're going to go ahead and uh, choose another color. And yes, that is the color harmony tool that you just saw right there, but I'll talk about that in just a few moments. But once we start laying down some, some nice colors right here, um, you can start to see that having to go into here every time is basically wasting time. Every time we need to pick a color, we need to open this menu. No longer is that the case because we can now just tap on here and we can detach the color picker. Fantastic, fantastic. So now we can use the new color harmony tool and specify uh, complementary colors and simply start layering down some nice colors into the artwork. And with the new color harmony tool, we can specify how dark or how bright we want the colors that we're selecting to be, or how desaturated or how saturated we want them to be. And if we want to close the floating color picker, we can just simply tap on the X and that's gonna make it go back to where it came from. And uh, we now have a full sized version right here. And one thing we can also see is that we now have a history of the colors that we've been selecting. So if we want to go back to a color that we selected previously, we can simply tap on the color right here and start using that color. So it's just one of those things that remind us that Procreate is listening to the user feedback and actually implementing changes. And yeah, I just absolutely love these changes. But now let's move on to the clone tool. Now, to illustrate the clone tool, uh, let's take a look at the uh, tattoo that uh, the zombie version of uh, Post Malone has on his forehead. So if we tap on this icon right here and we tap on clone, that's going to open up the clone tool. And now we have this nice circle right here, and that is going to specify where we want to sample from. And now the only thing we need to do is specify the brush size that we want to use and the strength and the specific brush that we want to use. I'm just going to use the medium brush. It seems to work pretty well for this. So let's choose a size, something like this. And now you can see once I start drawing and applying a little bit of pressure down, I can actually just sample from this area and draw on that area. So very quickly, I can pretty much erase the barbed wire tattoo he has on his forehead and make some changes back to the hairline to redo some of the, some of the areas where I went, of course. Yeah, clone tool. Just another one of those fantastic features that they just added to the program. Now, apart from all of these changes, there are also some minor changes to uh, the performance of the program, it should run smoother. Uh, they have improved the memory uh, handling of, uh, of the Procreate. So, you know, there's just so much packed into this update. 
But that's going to do it for me in this video. If you want to learn more about Procreate, go ahead and check out some of the other videos that I have on my channel. Now you can support the channel by clicking on the thumbs up button and sharing this video with your friends or whoever might be interested in Procreate. But that is going to do it for me. I want to thank you all very much for watching. Have a wonderful day. See you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.